Hi guys and ladies, welcome back to another episode. This is episode number six of the podcast. My name is Disema Matsieti. Now this week we're going to be talking about the different roles that you find in a data science field. Data science is quite a new field and there are different roles that are specific that you can find there. Some of these roles share um, you know, functions with business intelligence, but we are really going to be looking at those different type of roles. If you're asking yourself what type of roles am I going to be looking at, we're looking at data architect, we're looking at data engineer or a SQL developer, and we're looking at a database administrator or a DBA. We're also looking at a data analyst, we're looking at data visualization specialist, and a machine learning engineer. Uh, some of us, we think in that data analyst is the job role, but it turns out it is a whole new field. We'll talk about that one just after our theme song. I have recently uh, given in to my internal desire to know more about data science. Actually, I found myself enrolling in the Corporate Finance Institute. Uh, there's a certification in business intelligence and data analysis. And uh, for me, I was just thinking, you know what, I just want to upgrade my skills in terms of BI. But I was quite amazed on how they covered the whole data science portion of it and it was quite eye-opening for me and what became quite important for me that the guys done very very well was to make me realize that all the different roles are not just synonymous to business intelligence but they can actually work hand in hand even in the data science field uh, my mind was a little bit close up because when i'm looking at where i worked the data team was one huge department or one huge function that has data science, it had business intelligence, and it had all of those different you know, data uh, split within itself. And I thought to myself, hang on a second, data science is advanced analytics only, and business intelligence is everything else that has to do with data. But to my surprise, the team was quite efficient being set up that way because some of the data uh, manipulation that the data engineers were, were doing while they were sitting under the business intelligence um, department, they were actually sharing with the data science department. But if you were to create a new data science department from scratch, the cost actually quite me, made me realize that you might be stealing some of the functions that you see that are available in the business intelligence world and bring them for over to your data science world. So just looking at that, you know, um, me high level, just to say, this is what people that are, are doing. And you might start your career in business intelligence, thinking that you're just a data analyst, but you might actually find yourself being compatible in a data science field also. So you just don't stop yourself to say, oh, hang on a second, I belong in this field. I cannot uh, jump across. But all of this, if you missed our episode four, don't uh, panic because in episode four, I tried to explain what is business, in, uh, uh, what is data science. And in there, I explained that uh, uh, data science has got five uh, stage process. And in the stages, um, we're just going to go through them um, just now. But you'll realize that in those five stages, each role has got something to play in the stage itself. And if you say you're thinking that a data science is the person that does everything, you might somehow be uh, mistaken because you might be shook when I tell you what the job title of that person that's supposed to do everything back to back. But let's just take it one step further. The five stages, if you 
you still uh, could not remember them or you listen in a hurry, they are the first stage is data collection and storage. That's where you bring in the data together. You're making sure that uh, there's no duplicates. It follows whatever uh, type of, you know, um, governance rules and then you store it. The second one is transforming data for projects. So not every project will have the same data. And in that case, this is where you find yourself having different data that um, is catered for different departments. The finance department will have its own data. The projects departments will have its own data. The retail department will have its own data type of thing. So you start preparing your data for different projects that you're looking at. St uh, stage number three is doing statistical and predictive analysis. This is where you, uh, when we're talking about uh, statistical, statistical analysis and predictive analysis, it's where you are bringing in all that data together so that you can start to say, oh, what is the data telling me? Um, what does it look like? And then you start actually going in and creating uh, what we call a, a data model data model when you're in that stage it's just you're connecting all the data connections um, sales data marketing data whatever data hr data bring it together and you're creating whatever so, sort of a mud and you start doing your own predictive and statistical analysis in there and then stage number four is on stage number three since you brought in the data together you would, would call that a data model this is where you're doing stage number four you're doing model evaluation and you start visualizing whatever you are seeing in the model um, some of the models might be telling us might be giving us um, you know the new pricing structure this is where you start to say is it really feasible for us to have this new pricing structure and then you you go forward uh, looking that way so once you realize what your new model look like you start evaluating that model and then last stage is uh, sharing insight this is what i i was used to because we were always jumping from one bottom to the next we used to data scientists or most of them being on stage number five where they start to tell you what's the impact of the increase in interest rates for instance they'll tell you so many people will fall off blah 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 and we all see data science as management on that level and then we we really really understand sometimes what the rest of the five stages really involve this is just in high level what what does the five stages um, uh, quite involve and then once you are you realize that you, you, once you have uh, started engaging with menko and they understand the frustration that you're going through they might actually come to the party to help you out with the frustrations that you're looking at in your in your data science department they're just not looking for you know something else that you you become frustrated and they're waiting for answers and nobody's doing stuff and the bot is actually getting irritated with us and when while we're looking at the five stages there are seven roles that are quite particular in in these stages and the seven roles in the data science uh, field um you can say um the field itself it's it's sometimes general um, and the job description is the one that actually tells you where where do you sit in because sometimes i've heard of people getting this data science thing but only to find out that they're actually data engineer um, but maybe the hiring manager was not clear on the fact that you are in the data science field but we will ask you to hop between um, different stages out of the five stages between collection and data model evaluation statistical analysis when you might find yourself spending more time on on the collection of data because maybe the, the department is new and in so doing you find yourself becoming a data engineer instead of of being a, a real uh, data science for instance so in that case um uh, you you find yourself um hopping between different stages but what is well known is we looking at data science as the big field just at the beginning here where you do data collection and probably just just data collection and, and, and collect and collection is what um, is normally done by a data architect um, they, they they have special uh, abilities of actually sitting down there and be able to um, do the data governance and they belong on that field so that first stage, if you find yourself being a data science and all you're doing is data collection, 
you might as well just swap your, your title or your career to a data architect because that's what data architects are actually quite do. Uh, the role is, is jumping between data collection. Um, sometime a role could jump between data collection and storage and also transforming uh, data for analysis or transforming data for, for whatever project. So once a data in, uh, architect has already collected the data, you might have a little bit of a bigger role to say, we want you to, guide, to go collect the data, but you're doing it for the finance department. And that, that guy that sits there, we call them a SQL developer or a data engineer because they are uh, uh, hopping between data collection and also preparing the data for projects. Uh, it could either be a data engineer, a SQL developer, or a database administrator. They play quite a huge role in just collecting all the data and making it specific for that project. Um, so you, if you find yourself just collecting data, you're a data architect, if you find yourself collecting specific data for a specific project, you might find yourself as either a data engineer, a database administrator, or SQL um, developer. Other roles might require you to do a little bit more. They might require you um, to just do the data collection for projects. And then once you, because the data is already in the database, uh, you're not going to put data into the database. All you're doing is you're collecting the data that's in the database, and then you're extracting it for a certain project. So uh, in my case, I was doing it for a finance department. You find yourself extracting that data. And then after that, you find yourself doing statistical or predictive analysis on it to say, oh, let's just bring it together. This is where the mean, the mode is. And you might sometimes find yourself doing model evaluation uh, at, at, the, at the whatever model evaluation uh, and visualization. Uh, and in that case, you become what is commonly known as a data analyst. Data analyst is a common um, role that's being advertised, especially in data, because it actually crosses from, um, it's for somebody else who can manipulate the data that you already collected and give you insights out of it. So it, it runs, it ranges to a bigger role. And when we're always talking about your career in data, most people are talking about being a data analyst because the data analyst is quite, is quite uh, broad. But if you find yourself um, not just being interested in the whole statistical modeling and stuff, and you're thinking to yourself, do I still have a career in, in, um, in data science? Don't stress, there's already somebody else called a data visualization specialist. Um, data visualization specialist also doubles between uh, business intelligence and data science. What they do is they sit between um, model evaluation and visualization and sharing ideas. And sometimes they can do uh, uh, statistics and, and, and uh, predictive analysis. So they don't have to deal with data. You collect your own data. Once you have collected your own data, you just tell them, here's the data connection. He takes the data connection and he says, I'm going to take the connection. I'm going to try to build a dashboard out of that. So those people are data visualization specialists. Those are the people that you call to say, we have our data. Our data doesn't have a duplicate. It's perfect. We just want you to come help us visualize it so that our main meetings or ex meetings can actually run much better. Those are called the data visualization specialists. What we know currently being advertised as this role called a data science, sometimes you might find yourself doubling into either um, data collection. Like I said, you're doubling into uh, gathering data for projects. And then you're also doing statistics and, and predictive analysis. And then also you are doing maybe model evaluation and, and um, visualization. You find yourself in, in that four of the five stages. And then we're like, okay, then you are a data scientist because you, you can run, you can collect the data, you can um, you know, make some data, make some numbers, make look nice. And you can also you know, create dashboards. Here's a title called a data science of which sometimes based on where your, your, uh, your strengths are, you might find yourself just sitting on 
on model creation or maybe statistical and predictive analysis and say, oh, the other ones are too much for me. But the ideal um, job title that actually covers the whole five stages is called a machine, a machine learning engineer. A machine learning engineer is the guy who, uh, what we normally expect from a data scientist, they can do that. They can, um, they know a lot of programming languages. They know a lot of tools that they can use and they're proficient in all of those tools. And they're able to, um, you know, run their own robots, hence machine learning, run their own robots so that the robots can actually be programmed to do what they, de they desire to be uh, uh, received. And on top of that, they can even go to the boardroom and share the insights themselves. So these are quite rare people. Uh, when we putting out a, a role and we're thinking, we're looking for a data scientist, in our head, we're thinking about a machine learning engineer, a person who can do everything and code and can be able to run robots and, 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 and we want that person in our team. But in actual essence, we end up, you know, finding people with this role of a data scientist that are more like data analysts or sometimes more of a data visualization specialist and not just be this machine learning data scientist person that we, we would like to have. Just maybe in high level, let me just go through what, it, what does each of this role quite entails. Let's look at a data architect. So a data architect, the duties are, you know, to create data strategy, including how, where, when, what data is stored. So data architect, think about when you build your house, you need an architect. An architect role is to actually build the data from scratch. Uh, they are IT professional responsible for defining the policies, procedures, models, and technologies to be used in collecting, organizing, storing, and uh, accessing the company's information according to um, this website that I found called uh, Tech Target. So they are responsible. Those people are here to build your data. They are the architects of data. And they work hand in hand with organizational architects because the organizational architects does the same thing. They say inside this organization for us to receive our three year goals, or whatever the case is that we want to achieve, it is better to have these functions. And the data architect come over and say, if you want those functions, you must store your data in this case. It must be updated in this case. And there's a lot of demand for these people um, uh, out there. Um, the primary task is to drive and transform the data capabilities and enable a data-driven culture across the group uh, or across the whole uh, organization. And therefore work with other architects and platform teams to ensure data is managed as an asset and is centralized, standardized, uh, and consistent uh, and consistent manner to maintain consistency and quality using mature technologies and emerging data practices. So they can work on SQL or no SQL technologies, uh, distributed distributed computer computing framework, and techniques to make the right tools and the techno technology choice. Those are data uh, architects. Second one, data engineers. And according to Coursera, of which there's very, very good um, courses out there that, uh, that you can take if you want to become a data engineer. But according to Coursera, data engineers work in a variety of settings to build systems that collect, manage, and convert raw data into usable information for data science and business analysis to interpret. So they are the ones that start. The other ones governs the data. This ones they start you know, working onto the data. And if you want to do, you can actually go into the Google um, if you want to be a data engineer and you are an enthusiast. You can go into Google and it will help you. The certificate will help you uh, design, build, operationalize, secure, and monitor data processing systems with a particular emphasis on security compliance, scalability, and efficiency, reliable, reliability, and fidelity, and flexibility and portability of data itself. So a data engineer, very, very quite.
quite nice. The most common known number three is the data analyst. So data analysts are the ones that actually can work on uh, various uh, areas. So data analysts gathers, cleans, uh, uh, and studies the data sets to help solve problems. They do this by focusing on the, the analysis that are all um, that we are all most familiar with, the type of analysis that we, we know. Uh, they source the data, formulas, data uh, models, pivot table, and visuals. So when we start working on those pivot tables and we're making it easier for you to understand, this is where data analysis were coming in. And when I started my career 2008 and I saw the guys, what we'll call them a finance MIS, they were actually data analysts. They were helping us analyze the data and create cost reports so that we can do management reporting. So they work with uh, various tools, including Microsoft Excel, which is one of my favorite, Google Sheets, which I'm, I'm very, you know, a little bit there, SQL, which is SQL Server Management uh, Studios, Tableau, R or Python, SS, which is, you know, known everywhere, uh, Microsoft Power BI, and sometimes they use this thing called Jupyter Notebooks. So they are able to work on almost everything uh, because they are expected. They are, um, the, uh, if you were to go out and look at an analyst, you have a better bet looking at the data analyst. So you're looking at somebody else with a wide range of talents. Okay, this is going on, moving on to another field. This one is this uh, another job title. This one is called a database administrator or a DBA. So database administrator does a lot of things. Um, and what they're doing is, um, if you, I went into Oracle because I was like, okay, tell me what does a data a database administrator actually quite do? And they are quite responsible for maintaining, securing, and, op uh, and operating database and ensuring that the data is correctly stored and retrieved. So there are different type of database administrators that are out there. So you can look at, I only picked up the seven um, that I thought, okay, this is quite, maybe we can work on the seven. The first one are called system administrators who are responsible for the overall management or an upkeep of the computer system. Second ones um, are data modelers. Um, they're also, you know, uh, database administrators because they create and maintain data models that depict the relationship between the data elements. So data modelers, uh, you go to them to say, oh, can you join um, this uh, uh, tables together? They will be the one that help, help you build a model. Um, so they are not data the uh, data analyst, but rather that database administrators called data models. Another one, uh, third one is application uh, DBAs, which are quite responsible for the administra administrating the database that supports uh, applications. If you have a software in your, uh, your well in your uh, workplace and you need somebody else to help you with the data that comes out of there, they can use Google Analytics or whatever the case is to whatever tool that they use, but they are responsible for that the data that comes out of that application. So they are called uh, application data uh, base uh, da database uh, administrators. Other ones are task oriented uh, DBAs, focusing on particular areas of database administration, such as backup, recovery, security. So these guys are the ones that you would find into the, the, the IT department, the, the back office the IT department to say, okay, let's just, you know, back up the data, make sure that the data is up. When something happens, the data just doesn't go uh, disappear. Other ones are performance analysts, which monitor the database performance and identify areas where improvement is needed. So they sit when, when, when you pick up a call and you're like, hey, my data is taking too long to run. These are the guys that will tell you what needs to be done. Data warehouse administrators, number six from uh, this list of database administrators, and because they manage data that's, uh, that, that is stored for business intelligence or decision support uh, application, they are responsible for extracting uh, data correctly, transforming the data, and loading it into the data warehouse. Uh, the last one I'll call the cloud uh, database administrators. I know most of us are moving into the cloud, so they are responsible for administering a database hosted into a cloud computing like AWS or Azure, 
uh, provision and managing database instances, setting up application and high uh, availability, and monitoring database performances. So just start looking at database administrator. I mean, there's so much that you can do just to make sure that the data is there um, in the data science field. So there's all these other people that you might actually need to run the application that you're looking for. Okay, just moving on, we're going to be looking at the guy who's going to be helping us with the visualization. He's called the data visualization specialist. They are, uh, what they do is they turn um, data into insights um, and, and, and those insights, they turn them into meaningful visuals uh, so that they can help the Menko, you know, make take decisions so they can make a, a lot of they can use a lot of things um, in, in this case they can use SQL uh, data extracts they can schedule jobs they can do API integration they can use what we call views in data um, so you have views there they can also work on that they are they know how to work with clients and teams and they are normally subject matter experts to strategies on data driven business uh, process improvement Transition, uh, transitioning Excel-based uh, reporting into a normal automated nice dashboards. These are the guys that you go into. And communicating with uh, data visualization vendors, uh, they are the guys that need to tell you what um, software you should be buying for you to get these visuals that you're looking for. So that's, those are the visualization specialists. The machine learning guy, machine learning engineer, because he runs everything. Uh, and they can link all models, they can code. I mean, this guy is like, you know, the master of the data science field. It's part of the computer science field and specifically concerned with artificial intelligence and uses algorithms to interpret data in a way that replicates uh, how humans learn, uh, machine learning engineers act as critical members of the data team. And their task can, can involve researching, building, and designing the artificial intelligence responsible, responsible for machine learning and maintaining and improving existing artificial intelligence system. Uh, I still go back to my um, module in optimization when I walked in and were told that at the end of the, the semester, we should be the one who are coding the system that does this because you cannot always find a robotics process uh, automation that's ready for you. You might have to create one from scratch. Um, uh, what, what, what we found out just in, in closing is that what is needed from people like uh, data scientists is we want the people that are able to, you know, help you work with whatever software that you've picked they must be able to, you know, get the meanings out of it. And the platform that you're going to be looking at, um, that they must be able to work, you know, to help you procure that platform. The platform must, you know, um, allow them to work together in groups because data scientists don't work in solo. As much as we think that you can just hire one person and you give them R or Python and they're ready to go, they don't work in solo, they work, you know, together. And, you know, there's platforms that they work on must prioritize integration and flexibility, uh, especially for, for resources that are found online like Git, GitHub and GitLabs and, and Bitbuckets, you know, all those resources. They must be able to have um, access to those resources. It must have enterprise-grade capabilities so that when they want to, you know, go enterprise route, they can, they can just do that. Just in closing, like we said, the data science field is quite new. It was, it just started being uh, uh, written in articles just here in 2002. And before you know it, by 2018, the title just started popping up, data science, data science, data science. So it's quite new. And the universities are all coming up with courses right now to say, what is the data science? What is, what is not? And it was quite important for me to just sit and just explain in high level on this podcast is to say there are various roles that you can have in a data science field and you mustn't feel ashamed if you are particularly interested maybe in visualization you're interested in data uh, specification or database administration you, there's various ways that you could be you can't just be thrown away to say oh you are an old dinosaur you can actually participate in the data uh, data science field 
and be and create meaningful um, results. Because at one point, I always say, you don't want to burden a machine learning specialist or a machine learning engineer with menial tasks. You'd rather have somebody else who can help um, the machine learning engineer, you know, prepare the data, make sure that it's right. And you might be that person that actually that play a crucial role in preparing the data, making sure that it's ready before analysis could happen. So I hope you got a nice overview of, of what data science roles are there. And yeah, we'll talk about what roles exist like this in business analysis in episode number seven. So stay tuned for episode number seven. See you then.